Hey, hey, Arcaders! Uber527 here, and welcome once again to the Cartoon Connoisseur Theater Podcast and our brand new minicast, Pokemon Rewind. This minicast is going to be going over episodes of the Pokemon anime through random story arcs. Now, the story arc that we currently are in is the Orange Islands, or Adventures in Orange Islands, depending on how you want to say it or how you want to look at it. And we are going over episode three today. Now, before we get into it, I do want to remind you that this will be full of spoilers. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, make sure you watch the episode. Of course, you can watch the episodes on YouTube, on Netflix, and even the free Pokemon app. If you have the free Pokemon app, they have a few of the Orange Island episodes on there and feel free to look at those as well. Now let's get into episode 3. Before we begin, I also want to go over some fun facts. So we'll start off with the usual one. So this episode aired on January 15th, 2000, and is the 83rd episode of the Pokemon anime. Now please remember that there are a few episodes in the first story arc that were deleted because of sensor reasons or whatnot. So I am counting these episodes, even though I probably will not be going over them uh, when I actually go over that story arc. So don't worry about that. This is the 83rd pod, the episode of the uh, anime, and let's move on from there. Now, just some fun facts. Today in this episode, we're going to be introduced to a character named Professor Ivy. Now, Professor Ivy was actually one of the first Pokemon professors that was a female character in the Pokemon universe. Now, for those of you who are not aware or haven't played the games in a while, the Pokemon professor's job is to research a different topic of Pokemon. For example, Professor Oak, who is the first Pokemon professor that we meet in the games and in the anime, he basically looks over how people, human beings, and Pokemon kind of interact with each other. He's also kind of the world-renowned expert of Pokemon as well. So all different regions know who, po who Professor Oak is. Usually, a pro besides researching Pokemon, Pokemon professors also give kids who are age 10 and up, when they get their Pokemon license, their first Pokemon, and a Pokedex. Now, in the game, you have to fill out the Pokedex yourself. In the anime, you have uh, the Pokedex is already filled out for you. You just point at a Pokemon and go. So... That's basically a Pokemon professor's job description. And Professor Ivy is one of the first female ones that we meet. Now, she is not in the games, so a lot of people don't count her as a Pokemon professor. But because we're going through the animes, I'm going to count her for this one. And we won't see a female professor again until the black and white story arc. In the black and white games, there's a Pokemon professor named Professor Juniper. And she is actually a Pokemon professor in the games, so she does count. So a lot of people count her as the first female po Pokemon professor, but according to the anime, she is not. Professor Ivy is. Now, Professor Ivy also has three assistants. Her assistants' names are Charity, Hope, and Faith. They don't actually say their names or are introduce themselves anytime in this episode. I did find this out. Now, all this information that I find out came from Bulbapedia, if you haven't heard of Bulbapedia, it's a really great race resource for anything Pokemon. So check that out, Pokemon News. And I like to I like to listen to them. They have a huge information about each episode. So that's where I get a lot of my information from. Now, one other thing that I want to talk about for Professor Ivy is this is the first and the last time we will see Professor Ivy in the flesh. Uh, really, we won't see her again ever in the anime. Now... If you do want to see her again, she does make an appearance in Pokemon 2000, the movie. It was the second Pokemon movie to come out. It came out around 2000 or so, and you do meet her in that movie. She doesn't make an appearance, but other than that, you never see her again in the anime. They talk about her. They have flashbacks with her, but they never ever you never ever see her again in the flesh. So, it's kind of sad because I do actually like the character. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But, again, this is the first and last time you see it. This episode also introduces us to something very controversial through the Pokemon anime, and that is the GS Ball. Now, we talked last week about a mysterious ball that Ash has been trying to get from Professor Ivy. That's why he's traveling to the Orange Islands. And this right here is what it is. It's called the GS Ball. Now, 
if you're watching this story arc for the first time, I'm about to spoil something very, very important. Now, usually I, I usually I warn you at the beginning and then I just go on with spoilers. But this time I'm going to be nice and I'm going to say again, we are going through spoilers again. So if you don't want to hear this spoiler, uh, jump about a minute and a half ahead maybe two minutes just to be safe. We'll, we're just going to talk a little bit about the GS Ball. Now, the GS Ball is kind of a MacGuffin that they had put in the Pokemon anime to kind of drive the story a little bit, to kind of give you a mysterious kind of setup. However, the GS Ball doesn't really pay off. We will see through the anime that the GS Ball kind of disappears and no one ever talks about it or thinks about it or anything again. It was given to Kurt in the Johto journeys, which we'll hopefully be going through, and we never, ever see it again. Now, supposedly, the GS Ball was supposed to house a Pokemon called Celebi. Now, Celebi was one of those event Pokemon, kind of like Mew, that you could only get through special events that happened. So, Celebi, however, does appear in the fourth Pokemon movie, Pokemon Forever in the States. Because Celebi appeared in this movie, they kind of dropped the whole GS Ball story arc so you don't really hear anything about it again after the after the very beginning of the johto journeys i know i know i know there's a huge discussion of what's in the ball and what does it do or why was it there you can go on youtube and watch many 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 different videos that talk all about these conspiracy theories and what the thing had and how mad people were about this ball i'm not going to go over it I'm going to mention the GS Ball because it does appear in the episodes and at times is a whole part of the story, but this is the first and last time I'm going to mention the GS Ball and the controversy surrounding it, so I'm sorry, but that's just the way. I just I know it, it doesn't pay off for any reason. I'm not going to go over that. I'm just going to go over the story and how it's laid out, so there you go. GS Ball, done. All right, so... With all those facts out of the way, it is now time to go into the episode three, into episode three, which is entitled... Pokeball Peril! That's right. Pokeball Peril. This episode opens up with Ash, Misty, and Brock, who are walking away from their crash landing on Valencia Island. The, pl the blimp has crashed. They're walking away from it and trying to find Professor Ivy. Now, it begins with Ash kind of complaining about how hot it is. And I really didn't think we needed that. I think the scenery kind of, we kind of could see from the scenery that it, it was a tropical climate, so we didn't really need to know that it was hot, but okay. It kind of gives us something a, a little bit. And to nobody's surprise, of course, they're lost. They've never been to this island before. They don't have anyone that's uh, with them that knows the island. So they're a little bit lost. Of course, they find a Pokemon Center. Again, Pokemon Centers are where Pokemon trainers can go and heal their Pokemon after a hard battle. And of course, they meet Nurse Joy. There's a Nurse Joy in every single Pokemon Center, and they all look alike. This is kind of a reference to the video game, because if you go in the video games, the nurse at the Pokemon Center, they all look the same. It's kind of a joke, a running gag in that kind of points to the video game and kind of makes fun of it a little bit. Of course, Brock flirts with Nurse Joy, which, again, goes nowhere. And then, of course, Nurse Joy points out where Professor Ivy's place is. Now, I'm not sure why this scene was so important. I, I kind of figured they could have done this another way. Maybe they wanted to show that there are Pokemon Centers and there are Nurse Joys in the Orange Islands. I don't really think that that's very important, especially since this is Pokemon and they've been beating this joke to death. So I really don't think they needed to explain all this. I mean, I think they could have just found somebody in town and they could have pointed it out. I don't know. But that 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 scene was there and that, that's how they get over to Professor Ivy's. Now, they get to Professor Ivy's lab and there's nobody there at first. They're calling out for her and nobody's answering. And then all of a sudden... Out of a trap door at the bottom of the floor comes our three assistants. And they have this kind of Huey, Dewey, and Louie kind of vibe to them. If you if you know classic Disney, Huey, Dewey, and Louie were Donald's nephews. They would const they're, they're triplets, and they would constantly, especially in the old comics, they would kind of like finish each other's sentences. 
And that's what these three always do. They have that kind of Huey, Dewey, and Louie vibe to them. I don't know if you've ever noticed that before, but it, it just kind of it, – it's kind of weird in a way. I know it's like a very overused trope in cartoons to do triplets and they each kind of just finish each other's sentences. I just, I just think it's a little weird is all. I don't know where the joke actually originated. Maybe it was from Disney. Maybe it was Huey, Dewey, and Louie that kind of originated this joke and just everyone just kind of copied it. But that's just the way it is. Now, after the three of the assistants take Ash, Misty, and Brock to the back where Professor Ivy, I was going to say Professor Junior for for a second, sorry. Professor Ivy is actually in the ocean and she's taking care of a Gyarados. We we get the whole joke of that uh, Ash wishes that he could train his Charizard like she's training the Gyarados. And of course, out of nowhere, Brock says, I wish she'd train me. Okay, we're going to skip that joke and move on. So... Of course, we're introduced to Professor Ivy, who has this grand, grand entrance. She does a flip and comes out of the water, and then one of her assistants throws her lab coat uh, over her, and she just kind of lands right in front of them, and they're all stunned. Whoa, you know, what the heck? That's kind of Professor Ivy's introduction. Was this dynamic entrance necessary? I don't know. It kind of seems unnecessary, but... I kind of think it also gives Professor Ivy kind of a different vibe than Oak because we really don't we really don't see Oak too much in action, and I think it kind of gave her like she's she's younger than Oak is, she's a little bit more energetic maybe, although she doesn't really <laughs> look at it. She always has her eyes kind of like half open the whole time, but that's just how she's designed. Of course, then of uh, Professor Ivy brings them back to the lab and then shows them the GS ball and then kind of tells Ash that she can't open it. They've tried everything. They've tried hacksaws and buzzes and, and everything they can think of, lasers, and nothing can open this ball. And they can't even transport it because usual Pokeballs you can transport, but unfortunately this one you can't. That's why Ash is trying to take it to Professor Oak. Of course, then once he gets the ball, then... Ash goes to Professor Oak and calls them up, calls him up, and then Professor Ivy and Professor Oak talk a little bit, and they talk some nerdy science stuff, which is fine. It's kind of a little banter between the two, and you kind of see that they know each other, and they're kind of friends, and they've probably met a couple of times. That's just, it's, it's really kind of an interesting scene, but it's, very, it's, it's done, again, very quickly. And then, of course, we go back to Team Rocket. Of course, Team Rocket is sitting in front of the wreckage of the blimp, kind of sulking over the fact that this thing has been destroyed. So Jesse kind of gets James and Meowth to kind of fix the blimp because they're going to trick Ash and friends again. (sighs) Here's my thing, okay? Why? It failed the first time. Why are you doing it again? And then, of course, later on, they get fooled again. So I don't know. It's just, it's so weird that they're doing this again, but... Again, I skip over it. It's a kid's cartoon. They do these things. So let's move on. We get a little tour of Professor Ivy's lab. Ash, Misty, and Brock are treated to a little tour by Professor Ivy showing all the different Pokemon that are living kind of around her lab that she researches. And one of the things that I thought was pretty interesting about this is this is kind of the first introduction of shiny Pokemon. Now, for those of you not haven't played the video games in a while or just haven't done anything yet, I just want to explain real quick what shiny Pokemon are. Shiny Pokemon are basically different colored Pokemon. So, for example, if a Pokemon is usually blue, sometimes they may be purple or pink. That's basically what shiny Pokemon are. It's a very rare chance that you'll ever find one in the wild. There are ways to increase your chances, but for the most part, they're very, very rare. Now, here we actually meet a few Pokemon that have not only just different colors, but also different markings on them. For example, uh, there's some Vioplume, which are big flower-type Pokemon, and on their petals, they're orange petals, and they have red rings, where usually Vioplume have red flowers with, like, little yellow, like, little white dots on them, which is kind of neat. And then, of course, a lot of the Pokemon are a brighter color, and 
variations on on different things and of course different patterns i thought that was kind of an interesting idea and i I, i'm wondering if this is where the idea for shiny pokemon came because shiny pokemon didn't appear until the second generation of games and that would be gold silver crystal which is the next set of games that comes out after this story arc so I'm wondering if this is where the idea came from for the game itself. I'm wondering if maybe these colored Pokemon are maybe from the Orange Islands themselves, even though the Orange Islands are not necessarily in the game. They even meet a Butterfree who has some different colorations. There's like a little red dot on the Butterfree's wings. And this, spe this specific Butterfree won't eat any of the professor's food that they give to the Pokemon. Now, of course, Brock is the consummate Pokemon breeder, and he knows how to feed these Butterfree. And I'm really thinking it's because he has experience feeding Butterfree because of Ash had a Butterfree earlier in the other arc. So he knows how to feed a Butterfree. He goes and makes food for Butterfree and also puts a little sweetness on it so that the Butterfree will eat it, and of course the Butterfree does. This kind of impresses Professor Ivy a little bit. Kind of gives a more of a relationship to both of them. Now, after that, they come back in to go eat some dinner, and they find out that the house where they live near the lab is a mess. It's a dump. And, in fact, Ash comments that dumps are cleaner. Kind of reminds me of my apartment. Uh, so, <laughs> so, of course, Brock being Brock, he wants to clean it. So he goes around and cleans everything up and starts cooking dinner and, and does all this stuff. And uh, as they're sitting down to eat, they start eating. And of course, all three of the girls have no manners, including the professor. And it kind of reminds Brock of his family. And I really think this is kind of putting the little seed in all of our minds that, oh, wait, I think he may be making a decision here that I'm not sure about. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. But as you keep seeing... It keeps getting closer and closer. Now, the next scene after that, Professor Ivy and the girls are out looking at Vileplume, who are nocturnal Pokemon, and they come out to uh, spread their spores around their territory so that way predators won't come into it. And it is during this time that Eradicate, a giant rat Pokemon, ventures into their territory and starts getting poisoned. Now, Professor Ivy jumps in and tries to save it, and then she gets poisoned herself. And, of course, Brock saves the two of them, and they call for emergency services to come and pick them up at the Pokemon Center. And, of course, we get treated to this little scene because Ash and Misty were asleep previously. And, of course, it shows Ash and Misty kind of uncouth. They're just, like, their hair is all messed up. They're, they're you know, they're... They're not in their full outfits that they're usually in. They're not bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. They're just kind of like... It's basically they woke up by the assistants, I would assume, and they're just so happy that they've been <laughs> woke up. I will have to say, though, I did like how Misty's hair was designed. I thought that was kind of neat. Of course, you find out that Nurse Joy heals the Professor and the Radicade, and everything is all right now. Uh, but, of course, Professor Ivy gets a scolding from both Nurse Joy and her assistants, and she promises not to try to do that again, at least for the next couple of days. <laughs> and then, of course, it's the next morning. Misty and Ash are ready to leave. They have everything packed. They're saying goodbye to everybody. And then Brock's Pokemon come in, and they you see that Brock is fixing some stuff. And they're like, well, come on, Brock, let's go. And then, of course, Brock makes the show-changing decision to stay with Professor Ivy. Now, there's a reason why this happened. In the anime, when the anime was coming out in America, when the, the anime was coming out in America, in Japan, they were actually going through the Orange Islands. And the creators of the show were actually very, very afraid that Brock would be seen as kind of a racist, stereotypical character. So they decided to take Brock out because they didn't think there would be a good reception of Brock. So they decided to take him out in this arc so that way they could take him out. Well, unbeknownst to them, Brock became a hit. Nobody saw him as racist. They just saw him as a character. And now Brock is probably one of the more recognizable characters in all of the anime. And because of this, 
they decided to do something else a little bit later on, and that'll be later on in the arc. But so Brock decides to stay, and that's when we get this whole thing of them saying goodbye to Brock, who says that this ship needs a captain. I don't understand why, but okay. And of course, Ash calls him Brocko as he leaves, which is weird because we've never heard that before, but okay, sure, whatever. So they leave Brock with Professor Ivy and the three assistants, and they leave Valencia Island. Now, as they leave, of course, Ash shows Missy the tickets and says, we'll just go by Balimp again, which blows my mind that they would do this again after what just happened in the last episode. But, again, cartoon, so we move on. So, of course, they come back to the airport where they landed, they crash-landed before, and the... They see the new blimp, which was fixed by Team Rocket. Of course, Jesse and James pop up. They take the tickets. They push them in. And, of course, Ash and Misty are fooled by this again. Ugh. Anyways, so once they're up in the air, Team Rocket reveals themselves and has their usual intro and then puts a cage on top of Misty and, and Ash. Before this all happens, however, Jigglypuff somehow, again, gets on the blimp somehow. It just doesn't make sense, but whatever. So, Misty and Ash are caged, and I love the little aside joke that they have here about Misty and Ash kind of being alone together for the first time ever. Team Rocket kind of makes a little joke about the two of them being lovebirds and whatnot. So I just, I really think that this is kind of probably, it's one of my favorite scenes in the, the anime. I actually was going to pick it as the, as the stinger for last, last episode, but I decided not to choose it because I, it would give away the fact that Brock was gone. And I, I kind of wanted to leave that a little bit of a secret, but if you're a Pokemon fan who's been watching the anime, you probably already knew, but it doesn't matter. So they're caged. It doesn't look like they can go anywhere. And then all of a sudden... Jigglypuff comes in and sings and again puts everyone to sleep. But before Team Rocket could actually fall asleep, they somehow get their parachutes on and open the door, which sucks Jesse James Meowth out of the, the blimp while with Jigglypuff, who continues to sing and puts them to sleep as they're falling down into the ocean. This, of course, leads Ash and Misty on a blimp that in a cage and they leave this episode of a cliffhanger going, what's going to happen to Ash and Misty now? They don't know how to pilot this thing. They don't know what's going to happen. And they're all asleep. I kind of like this ending. I really do because it gets you excited and makes you want to watch the next episode. So that's pretty much the episode of Pokeball Peril. Now let's go over my pros and cons for the episode. We'll start off with the pros. So, First of all, I, I said this before in the podcast. I'm going to say it again. I really, really liked Professor Ivy. I loved her character, and I kind of wish we could have seen more of her besides this one episode. I know she's never going to come back, but it would be nice to see her again. It was She was kind of a neat character, even though the few episodes, this is the only episode we ever see her, you kind of get her attitude a little bit. You kind of get that she really loves researching these Pokemon and really want really cares for the Pokemon that live outside her lab. So I really did enjoy the character and I kind of wanted to learn more about her, but unfortunately we are not going to see her again. So whatever. I talked a little bit about the Ash and Misty joke. I thought that was pretty cool. I also like that this was not the usual format. Again, I really don't like a lot of the episodes that are the usual. They find a Pokemon Team Rocket tries to steal said Pokemon, they fight with Ash, they get beaten by Ash, and then they blast off. That's the usual format, but this was a little bit different. We didn't see Team Rocket till the very, very end of the episode, and uh, there was really no fight between them. It was just kind of Jigglypuff just showed up, and then they then it just kind of ended. And again, I also like the fact that this had a cliffhanger. I like when episodes make you want to watch the next one. That is good storytelling. It makes you want to see what's going to happen next. Now, as a nerd, though, I don't like cliffhangers too much because a lot of times you have to wait to see the next episode. But 
as a storyteller, it really is a way to hook your watchers, your readers, your whatever, so that you can watch the next episode. So a cliffhanger was a great idea for the next episode, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to continue on. I will also have to say the artwork for Valencia Island looks gorgeous. It looks so beautiful. Again, I said this before in one of our previous podcasts. They did a great job of really making this island look gorgeous. It looked like somewhere that I would want to visit. Valencia Island looked beautiful, and I really, really enjoyed the artwork in this. So those are my pros. Now for my cons. (laughs) This is our third episode into the story arc, and we're still setting stuff up. We are still setting stuff up. I, I get it. I get it. Set up. But I thought by now that this would be not another setup episode that we could have a little bit of fun. And to an extent we did, but not enough <laughs> for it. But of course, we have to introduce the GS ball. We have to get Ash the Orange Islands. That's what happened. This episode was titled Pokeball Peril. The Pokeball is not in peril at all. <laughs> there was no peril until the very end of the episode. So I have no idea why they picked this name for the episode. I, I It just doesn't make sense. You know, maybe something with Ivy, you know, maybe an introduction to Ivy because there was nothing that happened to the GS ball. I guess at the I guess you can kind of count the ending of the episode. They were the Pokéball was kind of in peril, but there was no peril for this Pokéball. <laughs> so I I really think that the title of it was just kind of, well, we had to think of something. So, again, no story meat. We talked a little bit about this. It's all set up. No real meat yet. No character development. Just more set up. So and uh, I'm kind of sad to see Brock go. I like Brock as I like Brock, Misty, and Ash. I think out of all the companions that Ash has had, I think Brock, Misty, and Ash are probably the most iconic trio. They are the most known of all the companions, and they're the better characters of the three of them. Now, obviously, this is a kids cartoon. And they can't get too deep, but I really do enjoy Brock, Misty, and Ash. I enjoy their relationship. I enjoy how they work together. And I'm kind of sad to see Brock go. Now, we're going to get a new companion in our next episode, but I really just kind of miss Brock. The only thing I don't miss is the little joke about him flirting with every girl that they meet. I don't miss that. It's, again, one of those things that I really dislike about the anime is they tend to take running jokes and they beat it like a dead horse. It, it not needed. It's not needed a lot of times. And I get that, you know, you could say that the Roadrunner and the Coyote running around is kind of a joke that's been, you know, that just keeps going. But they try to do something fresh with it. With this, it's the same thing over and over and over again. They don't really try to do anything fresh with it. And it's just one of those things that I I just dislike. However, I do miss Brock. I do like the character. And I'm sad to see him go. All right. So our next episode for our uh, next episode of the Pokemon Rewind podcast will be an episode entitled The Lost Lapras. In this episode, Ash and Misty crash land on Tangelo Island and find a baby Lapras that's got separated from his family. And along the way, they meet a Pokemon watcher named Tracy, who becomes one of our new main characters. So that's a little tease for the next episode. Before we close out, I first want to say, for those of you who are celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. And for those of you who aren't, Happy Holidays to all of you guys out there. I hope all of you have a safe and fun holiday while you're out there make sure you let your friends and family members know about this pokemon podcast that we're doing going through the anime especially those of you who are anime fans and who have friends that are anime fans please let us know and of course as always make sure you comment below if you're listening to this on our website thearcadearchives.com again at thearcadearchives.com Please comment. Let us know how this podcast is going. Let me know if you enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, let me know how I can improve. I always, always, always love feedback from you guys. You can also follow us on Twitter at Arcade A Network. Again, that's at Arcade A Network. Or you can follow me personally on 
Twitter at Tales FT Game Grid. Again, that's at Tales FT Game Grid. Thank you again so much for joining us here. And again, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you out there. I hope you enjoy this holiday season. And here is a clip from our next episode, The Lost Lapras. Have a nice night, folks. All right, Pikachu! Yeah! Hold it! This should only take a second. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. The feathers on your Sparrow indicate it's not getting enough vitamins and it could stand to lose a few pounds. The coloring on this Beedrill is pretty poor. And it's obvious this Hitmonchan isn't getting enough exercise. Uh... Yeah, just as I suspected. Bika, bika. It's easy to see that these Pokémon are pitifully underdeveloped. What do you mean, underdeveloped? Who made you the expert? But this Pikachu looks just perfect. You can tell because its coat's so shiny. Pika? Huh? Uh... Hey! Pikachu? I just want to make a quick sketch. Pika? Now hold still. Pika? It looks like your Pikachu's electric sacks are in super shape. Really strong. Hey, why don't I measure Pikachu's power levels with my voltage meter right now? Pika? Okay, now show me a Thundershock. B? Huh? We can't let these creeps ignore us. Let's go, guys! It's battle time! Hitmon Charge! Watch out! Charge! Thank you for joining us for this Arcade Archives Network video. If you like this, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and leave comments below. If you would like more, please go to thearcadearchives.com or zowiekerpowie.com. Thank you so much once again for joining us for this Arcade Archives Network video, and don't forget to keep playing like it's 1981. Message from Headquarters. This is a Rebellion production and is part of the Arcade Archives Network. That is all.